Well, it's almost the end of our first week back to in-person school, and boy howdy, what a wild and wacky trip it's been already. Stick with me, and let's talk about a few of the things that you might expect to encounter when you return yourself. Hi, and welcome to Classroom Confidential. My name is Christopher Youngren, and I'm a middle school ELA teacher in Tucson, Arizona. Here on this channel, I share tips and strategies I've used both in person and online, things that keep me sane and my students engaged. I'm delighted to share my ideas and experiences with you, so welcome. Well, about a week ago, I made a video about how I plan to approach a return to in-person learning. But you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men. Needless to say, after a year at home, when the kids came back to school, things got a little crazy. And regardless of how well we plan, and regardless of how prepared we are, we have to be able to adapt. We have to expect the unexpected and roll with the punches the best we can. So at my school, we're using a hybrid model of learning, which of course means that I have in-person students and at-home students at the same time. Right now, I'm allowed 10 students in my classroom to maintain safe social distancing standards, and they bring their computers with them, and they log on to the same Zoom meeting that the at-home students are logging into, so everybody is on the same Zoom meeting. I'm not entirely sure why it's necessary for my in-person students to be logging on when I'm literally right in front of them, but hey, what can I say? That's above my pay grade. I don't ask questions. Now, needless to say, and regardless of the email that you may have sent out to them over spring break, what email? I never got an email. Kids are going to show up on the first day back with computers that need to be charged. Well, I was charged last week. When's the last time you charged it? Oh, like a week ago? And so you're going to have to have designated areas in your classroom for students to be able to charge their computers. And in such a way that you're not going to have cords strung all over the place creating tripping hazards or fire hazards. And so I have in my room two different areas for this. I have one on this side of the room, one on this side of the room, and each area can accommodate three different students. Now, uh, I'm no math teacher, but last I checked, three plus three equals six, and six out of 10 students, that's a lot of students, so hopefully no more than six are gonna show up with their computers needing to be charged. So far, so good, but I'm prepared for at least 60% on any given day. Now, one of the biggest challenges I've faced so far is striking the right balance between between the in-person students and the at-home students. It is a no small feat, let me tell you right now, to be able to split your focus evenly in a way that everybody is getting the attention they deserve. What I've found is happening so far is the in-person students are taking a lot more of my attention, and as a result, I feel like the at-home students, to a degree, are getting gypped a little bit, and it's not fair to them, and it's also new. I mean, I, what, what I do is I lead with honesty. I, I say, please, guys, uh, I appreciate your patience. We're all just trying to figure this out, and, and I'm not meaning to ignore anybody at home, but there's a lot going on here at school. There are a lot of new policies. There's a, there's a lot of new procedures, and so please just bear with us as educators as we try and figure this all out. Uh, and, and so far, so good. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I've encountered is students kind of feeling like they're missing out and being kind of sad that they're not part of the excitement at school. But so that's why it's especially important that you focus on them and that you recognize them and that you make sure you're talking to them individually using their names so they can feel recognized, so they can feel seen as much as you are talking to the people who are in person with you. Now along these lines, when it comes to disruptive or disrespectful, God forbid, behavior, uh, and oh yeah, there's gonna be some. Believe me, these kids have been stuck at home for a year, so when they come back to in-person learning, uh, do you think they're gonna cut loose a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, but when it comes to the at-home students, you don't need to make them privy to whatever show the person is putting on. So you need to nip it in the bud immediately. Things are confusing enough already for people at home versus in person that you need to correct the behavior 
turn off your camera, turn off your sound, excuse yourself before you do that, take the disruptive party outside or send them somewhere else and then come back and move on. You don't want to create more chaos by dealing with everything on camera where your at-home students are probably feeling confused and out of touch enough already that you don't want to add to it by creating more chaos with correcting disruptive behavior. So turn off your camera, turn off your sound, get rid of the disruptive party or correct the disruptive behavior outside and then move on with your lesson. You can also expect communication to be a little weird for a little while, even with your in-person students. They've spent all year communicating with you online via Zoom. That it's gonna take a little getting used to when they come back and they're next to you or in front of you in person. Uh, for example, I had a student come in yesterday who had plenty of time before he arrived during classes to get done whatever he needed to do, and yet he came in, sat down, and immediately asked to use the bathroom. Bathroom. I'm like, dude, no, I know this kid's game. He does this all the time. Uh, every five minutes, he's got to go to the bathroom. So I said, we've got to begin class. You had plenty of time. Well, he immediately starts pouting. And then he sends an email to the teacher next door who then emails me and says he needs to go to the bathroom. Um, and then he finally emails me again and says, can I go to the bathroom? I'm literally 10 feet away from him. And he's emailing me asking if he can go to the bathroom. And finally, I'm like, fine, dude, go and come back. But the point is things are gonna be weird for a while. They have been communicating through a screen with you for so long that it's gonna take a period of adjustment for them to get used to communicating face to face. And we'll probably get it all figured out just in time for the school year to end. And speaking of the school year coming to an end, keep in mind, we are basically starting the first day of school almost at the end of the year. So crazy behavior is going to be expected. Thankfully, my students have been pretty darn good so far. But if they are cutting loose a little bit, if they are over energetic, if they are excited to see each other and they're messing around a little more than usual, Take it easy on them. I know it's easier said than done, and, and, and I've gotten frustrated already myself, but my goodness, keep in mind, a lot of them haven't had like face-to-face -face interaction with other students uh, and kids their age for a long, long time. So give them a break, show, and some, show them some grace, and take it easy on them, all right? Because they have been through a lot this year. We've all been through a lot this year, but for kids uh, especially, I think it's been really, really difficult. I know it's been difficult because I have kids at home and I've seen the effect that it's had on them and I've seen the change in them in just the few days since they've gone back to school and have been able to socialize a little bit. So allow for socialization. Don't allow for it you know, at the expense of your curriculum, but, but give them maybe a little extra leeway than you normally have because it's been a long, strange trip and they are long overdue for a little face-to-face -face fun time. Another thing you're gonna notice immediately upon their return to in-person school is that you're not gonna know who half of them are. I mean, even though you've been staring at their faces on a Zoom screen for the majority of the year, when they come back in person, they look different. They're taller, they're shorter, they're bigger, they're smaller. Uh, and of course, they're wearing masks and masks take up like two thirds of their face. And so instead of just going along like, oh yeah, I totally know who you are, good to see you, pal. Ask them. Ask him, say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble recognizing you with a mask on. Who are you? Oh, Charlie, of course you're Charlie. It's tremendous to see you. These kids need to be seen. They need to be recognized. They're probably, look, I teach middle school and those kids are at an age where they're feeling awkward enough already. Imagine how they feel showing up with masks on. Now, some of them are proud of their masks and they got cool masks, Minecraft, Among Us, whatever, but they still want to be recognized. They haven't been seen for a year outside of Zoom. And so when they come, uh, back to school and they're in person, they need to be recognized. And the sooner you can recognize them, the sooner you can create that bond and personalize the experience, much more so than if you just go along pretending like you know who the hell they are. And finally, I want to end as I began today and remind you that the best laid plans often go awry and you need to be flexible and you need to be able to adapt, adapt, adapt. We had an entire system set up of how things were going to happen as soon as kids got back on campus. And I tell you what, within an hour, 
things had changed and we had to make adjustments. Allow yourself the flexibility to change where necessary. Now, of course, you're still going to have to follow all the rules and guidelines set up by your own school, but you need to still be flexible within those constraints and you need to be able to shift uh, things around as is necessary um, because this is, again, this is new to all of us. This is new to you. This is new to me. This is new to the students. This is new to admin. We've never been through anything like this before. So take it easy, take it slow, and allow yourself to stay open to the possibilities of taking a different course where necessary. Look, we've almost made it. The end is near. I mean that in a good way. The finish line is in sight. And when we finally get to the end of this year, when we finally look back on this year, I hope you know how much you've learned as a result of what we've gone through. No, it has not been easy, but are we going to be stronger as a result of everything we've gone through? Yes. Are our students going to be stronger as a result? I believe those who have shown up and checked in, uh, even 75% of the time are going to be able to accomplish more next year than they ever have before. But we still have a little ways to go. And allow yourself, as I said, the freedom of flexibility. Roll with the punches, all right? It's only going to be a little while longer, and I know you can do it because you've made it this far. I've made it this far. Our students have made it this far. And we're all going to be stronger as a result. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this video. If so, smash that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and you'll be alerted every time I release a new video. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and take care of someone else. We'll talk to you soon.